things just got a lot more scary thanks to Hu Tao's deadly damage, and the only question remains, how will you build her? The first thing you should understand in order to take full advantage of Hu Tao's power would be her playstyle. And unlike any other character, her full potential lies within a very specific objective and that is by keeping her health below 50% as long as possible, which is heavily influenced by several different factors, with the most important one being her passive talent that provides Hu Tao with sizable pyro damage bonus. And this is a very crucial thing you will need to manage, because her elemental skill will infuse her attacks with pyro and getting that bonus from the mentioned passive on top of every attack is something you should strive for all the time. Speaking of which, her elemental skill gives her a unique ability that's similar to Child's that allows you to mark enemies with a blood blossom if they get hit with one of the charge attacks during the skill's duration. This is best used when you have a group of enemies in front of you because the animation of the charge attack is a forward lunge while her normal attacks cover a wide area, so striking a balance between the two is important if you want to maintain a good damage output. But the thing that truly elevates her playstyle is her burst that has two different activation modes and as previously mentioned, it will depend on whether she is at 50% or below health, and the default version is already pretty amazing, which will take away a big chunk of health from surrounding enemies. However, the damage and healing will significantly increase if she is below the specified health threshold, but the trick here is to understand that the more enemies she is facing, the less likely she is going to maintain the damage bonus from her passive, because you will most likely heal past the 50% mark, so it's going to require some time in order to master this balance between living and dying with her, which possibly involves letting enemies damage you and then applying a shield from one of your teammates. Still, her biggest damage source will be coming from her elemental skill and getting used to her normal and charged attacks animations will be important in order to manage the pyro damage and blood blossoms, while at the same time, you will need to keep an eye on her health if you want to maximize her pyro damage bonus and the stronger version of her burst. But mastering this tricky playstyle is only half the battle, and taking a look at our funeral director's equipment is going to be the next step. Besides the oversized hat she's wearing, her choice in equipment for the most part is pretty straightforward, at least when it comes to selecting a weapon for her. And the best choices would be any weapon that has critical damage or rate as their substat, so pole arms like Deathmatch from the Battle Pass or Blacklift Pole are going to be the 4 stars you want to get your hands on, and while they do have their own passives you could compare based on refinements, the more simple approach would be to manage the 2 to 1 ratio of critical damage to rate, or at least raise the critical rate to 70% before focusing on critical damage. Now for the gacha weapon, Weapons, Dragon's Bane and Lithic Spear are decent choices, but they both have their own limits and draw most of their power from passives, and going for raw stat optimization is a better, although harder thing to do, especially when you're not even at endgame, so these are definitely the weapons you can take advantage of in the meantime. But when we take a look at her free-to-play options, it definitely feels like a letdown, since two of the pole arms have physical damage bonus as their substats, which is not something you want for this trickster, and you're basically left with the best of the worst option of going with prototype Star Glitter, which actually is pretty decent for her, since it will help with recharging her burst faster, and it has a good base attack, while the passive will only be utilized one out of two times, but at least you're getting something out of it. Finally, for the 5 star weapons, without any doubt, the Staff of Homa is the most strongest pick for her, with Primordial Jade Wingspear as the second in lead, and Warptex Vanquisher along with Skyward Spine at the end. But in reality, any of these 5 stars are going to be awesome for her. Also, we'll be testing out more weapons and artifacts on her and sharing the results on Twitter, so make sure to follow us, link in the description. Now when it comes to her artifacts, there's one extremely important thing you need to understand when building her, and that is the massive attack bonus she gains from her elemental skill that's based on her max health. So even before covering which artifact set you should strive for, first, make sure to go for these main stats, which is health on sands, pyro damage bonus on goblet, and critical rate or damage on circlet. Additionally, when looking for good sub stats, the biggest focus should be critical rate or damage, followed by health percentage, and then energy recharge. But just make sure you understand this health bonus is otherwise useless until you activate her elemental skill, so if you're going to be using her primarily for burst, it's better to aim for the usual critical damage and rate instead. And as for the artifact sets, the recommended one to go with would be the Crimson Witch, even if it means you're not going to be fully utilizing the 4 set bonus, since you can only trigger the 2 set bonus multiplier once, due to how her elemental skill works, but even then, what you're really after is to get those vaporize and melt damage bonuses. But for the alternatives, you could also go for a Lava Walker 4 set, but it does have its own limitations, like fighting slimes who have their own elemental statuses, or the fact that you need to perform a single pyro attack in order to trigger the bonus afterwards. You could also go for Retracing Belight 4 set bonus, but this will heavily depend if you have reliable shield generators like Diona, Shinya, and Zhongli, or any other Geo character for this matter. Now it's not always easy to obtain good artifacts for the 4 set bonus, so you could go for a 2 set of Witches and Noblesse Oblige, which actually works out pretty well, especially if you're going to use her more as just support damage dealer for her burst damage. Finally, for the talent priority, you will want to focus on both 
both normal attacks and her elemental skill, because unlike Child, who gets his own separate damage multipliers when he activates his Hydro Blades, all you're doing with her elemental skill is boosting her attack and infusing damage with Pyro, which means it still heavily relies on you to have leveled up normal attacks, so the recommended route would be to get them both to level 6, and then first go for level 8 elemental skill, followed by normal attacks. However, if you still use her mainly just for burst, then obviously go for leveling this talent instead. So in essence, Hu Tao's elemental skill has a lot of influence on how you should build her, with the biggest priority being the obvious critical damage and rate, followed by health, which will boost her attack significantly, so getting substats and even the main stat of health on Sans will help her generate more damage efficiently. When you ask about Hu Tao, Zhongli will tell you she's an intolerant child, while someone like Xinyan gets spooked by her remark that people who like to play with fire are good for funeral business. But despite what her peers think of her, you still can't ignore the fact that she's going to be an insanely good addition to nearly any team composition. And part of this comes from what's surprisingly her own passive talent that provides teammates with 12% increased critical rate right after her elemental skill ends. So unlike some other main damage dealers, she encourages you to swap between teammates to take advantage of the bonus she provides, and because there is a cooldown you need to wait for until she can start dealing her godlike pyro damage again, this works out great for everyone in the end. And when you're building a team with Hu Tao, it's always a good approach to first start by deciding on attack partner for her, and then working onwards, so in this case, some of the core members that will maximize her damage output will be any of the cryo characters with Kaya being one of the better choices, and then Xing Cho for additional attacks, since they will let you take advantage of the melt and vaporize reactions respectively. And you can't go wrong with your usual suspects like Venti or Zhang Li, who will boost your damage regardless of what you're trying to achieve, and even better, because Hu Tao's power comes from elemental damage, you will definitely want to have an animal teammate with Bird Descent or Geo teammate with Archaic Petra. And in those situations where you cannot trigger amplifying reactions effectively, you could go for a double pyro and geo resonance team, so this is where Retracing Bolite and Archaic Petra would come into play. In fact, because of her unique nature that pushes her towards a riskier playstyle, it's going to be very beneficial to have at least one character that can generate shields instead of healing so you can maintain that 50% or below health threshold. All in all, treating Hu Tao from the perspective of an elemental damage dealer that dominates with Melt or Vaporize is the most important takeaway here, so building upon this foundation is what will get you the best team. For someone who works in the business of death, it's quite ironic that Hu Tao prefers to live on the edge constantly. But you can't deny this is going to be an, an exhilarating experience for those who enjoy a bit of a more complicated playstyle than usual. Overall, the biggest advantage Hu Tao has is her pyro element, which is currently dominating every other element in the game, and having access to melt and vaporize for someone like her is no joking matter, even if that's what our dear Walnut prefers to do. It also helps that most of her attacks cover a wide area, so we will have no problem with taking out large groups of enemies and combining this together with some of the teammates who will amplify her damage, you will easily gain new customers for her funeral business. However, you are basically missing out on a lot of damage if you don't manage the 50% health threshold which puts you into a high risk high reward playstyle that might not be something you could appreciate or want to bother with. Also, it doesn't help that there's no decent options when it comes to free to play weapons which is hopefully something that Mihoyo will address in the future. Still, she has a massive potential when it comes to the swap in and swap out team play, and things become even better when she applies a critical boost to her teammates that lets you experiment with more compositions than you would usually do when building a team around a dedicated damage dealer. The conquest to find and bury as many Chi-Chi's as possible for Walnut has finally begun, and producing this video took a lot of effort, so if you want to show some love for this channel, make sure to subscribe by hitting the bell notification on and gently pressing the like button. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, where you can see more exciting things about Hu Tao and Genshin Impact. Thank you for watching us, and don't get spooked by Hu Tao too often.